Hi, Facebook friends and uh, YouTube followers. Uh, Tim Lurch here to um, share with you a little fun lesson. I got a call the other day from uh, a friend of mine uh, named Mayhew, and Mayhew asked me a good question. He said, hey, Tim, is it really possible to improvise when you're playing solo guitar? Um, he might have said chord melody, but uh, it's not a term I really prefer. So, um, I, of course, the answer is yes, but the answer is a little bit... Uh, there's some nuance to it, as often is the case <laughs> with uh, good questions. Uh, great question, in fact, um, because if we're playing solo guitar, the emphasis is often on arrangements, you know. Um, I don't really play set arrangements, but I have very clear uh, boundaries and outlines usually on a tune that I know that I'm going to play solo because you need to. You have to be able to grab the melody and all of that. Um, but I don't play uh, arrangements uh, specifically where I play the same exact passages every time. Um, and that's fine too, but the problem with that is, is then when it's over, you, you what do you do? You know, maybe it takes 90 seconds to play an arrangement and then do you have 400 of those to make it through uh, you know, a four hour gig? You're a better man than I if you do. Um, so what I do, I'll have a lot of times three, four hour solo guitar gigs um, I do a lot of improvisation, and uh, and oftentimes I'm doing it in a way that I still have to keep it very listenable because I'm not playing for a real jazz bow audience. I'm playing for you know regular people who are eating dinner or whatever, um, and so I I think that it's necessary to really renegotiate in your mind what it means to improvise. Um, uh, in a solo guitar context, because we usually think improvising means, you know, playing lines, right? And it does mean that. For many players, that's exactly what they do. Horn players don't get to play chords, so they play melodies and lines. Um, but I don't think that a saxophone player is going to do a solo gig at a restaurant, uh, you know, <laughs> maybe, but uh, not typically. Um, so, given all of that, what I do is I make the melodies that I'm improvising rather a lot simpler. But that doesn't mean that it's less important musically. It just means that there, there's a little bit less going on in the melody and because there's so much else going on in the accompaniment. So, for instance, here's the, the, the um, first idea. This tune, uh, Don't Blame Me, says one, four minor, flat seven, three to six dominant, two to five, one. And the three and the two are often minor seven, flat five, rather than minor seven. Um, and I'll often leave the fifth out in the chord shape, but I'll play it in the bass and in the melody. So uh, I'll use those same voicings. So I'll watch this. I'll play it like I'm maybe going to accompany a singer. Then I'll add melodies to those same fingerings. same shapes being used. I just used mostly my little finger and my first and, and fourth fingers to grab melodies and, and I tried to make them, uh, you know, flow from one chord to the next so it wasn't just um, uh, kind of a grab bag. You really try and make sure you're listening for that melody, you know, da boo 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 bee, boo ba boo da doo dee da, dee 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 da dum bo dee. Da, da, do, 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 do. 
lost it there for a second. Okay, so it's it is an improvisational event. I'm not playing things I've just you know worked out. Of course, lots of practicing time in the in in the practice room has been to find out where those melodies live and where the uh, fingerings that I need to use to get them are. Uh, and get the physical flexibility to be able to hold a chord while I'm moving a bunch of other fingers and all that all that stuff. That's all technical and it's important and necessary to consider. Um, so there isn't a shortcut there, but this video is to really to uh, express that it's possible. <laughs> okay, so let's say I had a different set of changes. I say uh, C up here and then uh, There's my E minor to A, and then here's D minor to G. I'm playing the roots in the in the bottom of all these chords right now. Okay, so then I maybe do something like this. Uh, There's a bit of a conversation going between conversation going between the bass and the melody, but the bass is always and the chords that accompany the bass are always nice rhythm, some connection in the bass. When the melody comes to a pause, you can play a little bit of bass movement. Um, there are other strategies as well, simpler things um, in terms of texture. I might play. You know. So that would be holding a melody note in the treble and moving some things around in the bass. That's a fun way to go. exchange them, you know, uh, the, the top, play something up above, and then play something below. All these things, uh, you need to find out which fingers uh, set you up for that, but once you find that out, it's, it's um, not just playing set figures, you, you can improvise in the context of it, and that's the idea here today. Um, of course, you can play um, uh, simple things uh, like block chord ideas. you do if you do it with a good pulse you can make almost any notes work um, the problem that we have as guitar players is uh, it seems like we aren't as solid in the groove and the rhythm as we need to be and then we start trying to improvise and we get a little scattery in our mind and first thing that goes out the window is the time um, I say the last thing to go out the window should be the time. In fact, the time should never go out the window if you're really um, wanting to, you know, have a nice feel. You can be flexible with the time. You can play rubato. That's all good, but when you once you set up the pulse, once we go here, you want to you want to really keep that, so your audience is is um, able to stay with you in the pulse, you know, tapping their foot or 
feel in the groove. There's so many ways to get around on this business, but and I don't mean to say that it has to be one way or another, but I have some principles that are, I think, important to me that I wanted to share. Those kinds of ideas are also good too. Slow moving melodies that are, you know, in double stops or um, uh, thirds and sixths is usually what I use. Those kinds of ideas. There it is. Um, the, the, one of the things is you need to play within your means, uh, trying to play too fast. I often do that. I'll get myself over my head tempo-wise and then regret it. Of course, the, the idea is to stick with it and, and work your way through it um, or make some sort of elegant uh, change <laughs> uh, so that you can pull it off. Um, because you're playing by yourself, you can do anything you want. If you end up in the wrong key and you know you can always change keys, or if you get bored in the key you're in, you can always change keys. You can play, you know, we can take a song like this. And you can say, I guess to end here is the idea is if you want to play um, the chordal accompaniment way, make your melody simple. And if you're going to play um, freestanding melodies for, to connect the chords, make sure that the time and the start and stop sort of phrase makes sense, right? So you could say like this. <laughs> kind of goofed that one up a little bit. Okay, there's no real easy solution for this. It takes long hours of practicing, but it is possible and um, you know, there's a few things you can do. This guitar, by the way, if you haven't already noticed, is tuned down a whole step. It gives me a, a little bit richer um, bottom end. I'm moving a little more air. The strings are bigger and, and a little bit tighter, um, even though it's tuned down. So I have a 14 to 60 on here. So they're substantial to hold on to. But I'm not, but the action is quite low. I'm not fighting with the guitar. That's another thing. If you take a, a, a guitar that's set up for like wailing bebop, uh, with heavy strings and, and high action or something like that, if you're into that thing, it's very difficult to play solo guitar on that because you have to work so hard to get it to happen. So anyway, um, give yourself a, a chance to play uh, some sustained chords and then see if you can move some melodies around up above. Keep it simple, but keep it grooving. All right, take care. And uh, by the way, I know that this is a subject of, of some depth and, and confusion and difficulty. I'm teaching um, either in person in Seattle area or via Skype, which is more and more what I'm doing. Um, so if you're interested in having lessons on this subject or other related subjects, uh, please feel free to contact me either through Facebook or on my website, timlerch.com, T-I-M-L-E-R-C-H.com, and I'll get back to you and we'll see what we can work out. Okay, take care. Mm -hmm.